A doctor's wife was brought to class for hypnoanalysis. Three dermatologists had diagnosed her condition as scleroderma. The effect of the illness was evident by a scalp condition which resulted in loss of hair and eyebrow. This condition began prior to a stillborn delivery. In addition, the patient had suffered from rose fever since childhood. This is what the hypnoanalysis revealed. I want to just go to a time when you were a little girl in the first grade. Your school was enjoyable to you, wasn't it? Not in the first grade. Wasn't enjoyable to you. You didn't like the studies or anything like that? I didn't like the teacher. Or didn't like the teacher. Did uh, this affect you in any way? Did you ever feel so bad about school that it made you react in any way? It no. wasn't it? Never did. In other words, you were able to handle that quite okay. What we're going to do now, uh, Merlin, is we're going to take you into the fourth grade. Why are you sitting in this room? Your memory gets better with every breath you take. Okay, third row. Third row. Tell me, Merlin, have you ever had rose fever? I think I did. You had rose fever. Now we're going to take you back to the third grade then. And then third grade, you'll see it even clearer than you did the fourth grade. Because, like I said, with every breath you take, your memory gets better. You can feel it getting better, can't you? You ever had rose fever while you were in the third grade? Slightly. All right, we're going to take you back to the second grade. Uh, tell me, you're in the second grade now. Have you ever had rose fever? I don't think so. Never had. And something happened between the second and third grade that was an emotional involvement of some kind. Let's go to the second. Let's go to the end of the second grade. It's just June now. And you're not having rose fever now that you're in about seven years old in the second grade, are you? No. All right. It's, it's Christmas time and you're in the third grade. Has anything happened in the first part of this year that, that uh, has upset you in any way? My aunt died. Your aunt died. Uh, what did your aunt represent in your life, Marlon? Very important. Very important person. Even when you think about it now, it, uh, uh, you can feel like you felt when you were a child. Had your aunt been ill long? She died too. She died of childbirth. And this was the thing that upset you? And this was the time when, when, when uh, uh, the rose fever came on that year? She liked roses. She liked roses. Mm -hmm. And so that's what brought on the rose fever. I think so. All right. Now, let's go a little beyond that. Uh, this rose fever, was it because you thought of her in connection with roses that was that it? I had never thought of it. You'd never thought of it from that day to this, I guess. You never realized that, that, there, that there was any connection between this emotional involvement. After she died, did you continue to grieve over her pretty much? Did yeah. you? And uh, how did the rest of the family take it? They were, they were grieving too, were they pretty bad? Did you find yourself... Well, just tell me what you did find yourself doing, won't you, Mom? No, it was a great loss. How did you react to it? Did you find yourself at odd times... Well, for instance, crying by yourself and things like that? Yes. That did happen to you, huh? So that by the time the roses came along that she liked, there was quite, a, quite an emotional... You disliked them ever since. You disliked roses ever since? I think now that you realize where the rose fever came from, I don't think you'll ever be troubled with rose fever again because you know where it came from and now you're able to handle that situation and after all, you're many years removed from your aunt. But Marlon, that's a very important thing and it isn't only rose fever that we want to make sure that you don't have again but when you once start an allergy, you know, things grow and in emotional involvements. I want to point out to you something. You'll remember the first day that you ever found this head condition and, and you'll be able to tell me where you were and how you happened to notice it. What happened? I remember when my hair was thin in this spot. Yeah, where you'd been pulling it with your hands, yeah. And I remember um, sitting, I was outside. Mm -hmm. I remember the coolness of my skin and mm -hmm. the scalp, mm -hmm. and it frightened me that the spot was so large. Mm -hmm. When was this? It was before I delivered. Before you delivered. 
Was there anything on your mind about the delivery? Were you worried about it? Not that I know of. Was there anything that was upsetting to you during this period? Yes. Will you tell me what was upsetting, and I'll give you the cause of the uh, of that thing. What was it? I was it? very tired. I had a year old baby, a mm. two year old. Mm hmm. And I was tired, and we were moving. Mm hmm. Just too much for a young mother to take at that point. Was that it, or what? Remember, you told me a very important thing that you. Aunt died in childbirth. Remember that? Yes. Now along comes your baby and is still born. Remember also that probably in your childish mind there was still a great love for your aunt. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. So now we get two things together and we find out that here is a woman who is expecting to deliver and is going through a very tr trying pr pregnancy, trying in the, in to the extent that she's worried because she's so tired. Is that correct? Yes. I, I had often said that I didn't think I could ever deliver. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In other words, we found there... I felt guilty about that because uh -huh. I used to kid with the neighborhood women and say, I'm too tired to ever deliver. Mm -hmm. In other words, unconsciously or subconsciously, there was, there was a terrific holding worry back. and a holding back. In other words, uh, when well, ten months. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Afraid to deliver, in other words, was that it? Seemed to be. And this uh, dermatitis condition, uh, uh, did that develop during this time? Just a little spot. Mm-hmm. That's very large. You say the baby was still born? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, did you expect that sort of, because no. of the, the, the trying pregnancy or anything? No. But you did feel that you were holding back during the pregnancy, is that right? I didn't realize it at the time. But you, but now as you look back on it, you, you, I don't want to put words in your mouth, I want you to tell me what happened. Well, I, I went and I kept going back to the doctor <coughs> when it was due. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I <coughs> felt so tired, but they thought that I would deliver since the first one had been almost 10 months. And then <clears throat> I kept, I had a dream. Yes, that's the important thing. What did you dream? And I was sitting in the waiting room. Yeah. And the doctor went by and I pleaded, I was hemorrhaging. Mm -hmm. And I <clears throat> pleaded with him to do something. And he had <clears throat> a tennis racket and shorts. And he said, said, I have to play tennis. Mm -hmm. And laughed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just knew that I needed help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's all there was to the dream. Mm -hmm. I woke now, up. I remember that. No, no, wait, wait. It just, just, I know, you, I know uh, that, that dream roused you. Now, when I... I told I, the doctor about it. Uh -huh. When I snapped my fingers, uh... You're going to realize what that dream meant, the significance of that dream in your life. And you'll be able to tell me when I snap my fingers. What did that dream mean to you? You know. I thought the doctor was not listening to me. Mm -hmm. When I told him at my visit that I... That you were tired. In other words, that was the connection. Mm -hmm. And that you were begging him for help, but he wasn't giving you help, and you felt that the doctor was holding you back, and that was the significance of that dream. Uh, in other words, he was playing ball while you were while you were going through this pregnancy, and, and you were worried about it. Yes. Now, did your aunt's death uh, occur in her third pregnancy? First. Her first pregnancy. Did you tie up any situation with your aunt? I mean, uh, did you did you feel as though? Uh, you were going through what this woman that you worshipped so as a child was, had gone through? Um, <clears throat> it's hard for me to talk about this, but each time that just before I would have a baby, my mother would say it's an awful thing you're going through, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now we're getting to the real cause of this, of this head condition, I'm sure. Because, uh, 
you can see how you would react to a fright like that if it occurs each time that you've had a baby. And then she was with me before I delivered mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and helped me move. Mm -hmm. That was what was the hard thing about yeah. it, was it? Well, of course, uh, it's too late to do anything about it now, but, but you know that, that... I understand that problem. That if that ever occurs again, that, that, that it would be better that you she isn't there. Yes, the I have birth of your, you, you, you borne that in mind. Now, Merlin, uh, you can already see that this thing, this dermatitis, dermatitis is just almost any form of it, shows that there is an emotional problem that a person is trying to solve and as that emotional problem becomes too big for them apparently they don't know how to face it and a dermatitis begins in your case the constant irritation of the scalp probably may have been the determining factor but we have gotten to the fact that you were so scared during this pregnancy because of that tired feeling because of the additional words that your mother said and all that of the previous deliveries mm -hmm. that you held back probably subconsciously and probably that's is that when it, it, the spot appeared before the the birth but with the baby being stillborn now tell us how that spot developed because i imagine after that it came on pretty strongly is that right yeah. Now you see what that indicates, don't you, Merlin? I mean, what does it indicate? Don't don't let me tell you. You tell me what that what that uh, scalp condition indicates. You will know. Well, after I lost the baby, I was I just felt terrible. Sure, sure. But uh, I didn't want to show it because of the other two children. Mm -hmm. So I threw myself into as much as I could. In every way, mm -hmm. and outwardly, it seemed that I didn't show it. Mm -hmm. But inwardly, inwardly, you were feeling it pretty badly. Wouldn't you say that your holding back may have uh, done damage? Did you feel that? In other words, Merlin, what I'm getting at, this dermatitis condition, could you say it just bluntly? What does it represent to you? as sort of a punishment for what happened. I hadn't thought of that much. Well, is that the way you've, is that the way you've been feeling about it? That I, I thought it was tied up with whatever uh, prevented me from delivering. I, I thought that it was hormones. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's not the history of, of, uh, of these conditions as we find them. Uh, mostly the, con the conditions are strong emotional conditions that, precipit that are the precipitating factor. It could have been the feeling that in this terrible fright that you went through and then the holding back and then also the fact that your aunt had died in childbirth and now your baby had died in childbirth uh, or it appeared to you that maybe the baby could have been saved if only you hadn't been so terribly tired. Is that... That, that was the feeling. Although you didn't want to be responsible, that perhaps you could have been responsible. Wasn't that the feeling? Was that was that the feeling that you had? Yes. Yeah. In other words, you wouldn't have done anything in the world to, to have uh, to intentionally to have okay. uh, prevented that child from being born, uh, uh, just like your other children were born, alive and healthy. But there was a feeling, wasn't there, that maybe you had unconsciously or un, unwillingly been a contributing factor? Yes. Would you call it a guilt complex? Yes. That's the word I'm hitting at. You do feel that the, that the dermatitis represents the guilt, the, uh, the guilt complex. Is that I, what you just... I do, and I also felt that I could have gotten help. I mean, I felt that I needed help from the doctor. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And you weren't getting it. And I, I felt that the baby would have been all right. Mm -hmm. Had you ever consciously put these thoughts together? Not, uh, 
But in your mind, had you sort of been thinking to yourself, I wonder if the birth of the baby and all of that had anything to do with this oh, yes, scalp I, condition? Oh, yes, I have thought that all along. Well, now, let me tell you how, how we can get rid of that scalp condition permanently. In the first place, uh, Marlon, let me say this, that we are not responsible for what happens to us from external sources. For instance, if I happen to be the sort of a person who gets scared to death because somebody comes at me with a gun, mm -hmm. it's not my fault if I have heart failure, is it? No. Do you think it's the fault of any anybody who will say has seen an aunt die in childbirth? was going through a terribly trying time because she's so tired and she's and this pregnancy doesn't seem like the others because they're moving and everything else external influences do you see what I mean now then comes the time when your own mother unwillingly points the pistol at you and says oh you're having a terrible time and you know the fear that it brought on because it brought on the fear of your same thing happening to you as it happened to your aunt. And well, it was there, wasn't it? So can't you see, Marlon, that there was no f reason for a guilt complex within yourself? These things were externally caused, not internally caused. Can't you see that? The fear that the doctor wasn't helping you enough. That dream tells me, if it doesn't tell you, it should tell you, that here was a girl saying, for God's sake, give me help. And he says, no, I'm going out and play tennis. Now, when you went out over there, you weren't emerging. But Freud said that every dream is a I wish fulfillment. Yes, I know, but, but look at the situation. Every dream that a person has is a wish fulfillment, someplace in that dream. In that dream, you were asking for help. That was a wish fulfillment, wasn't it? You wanted help. Yeah. What did you get instead of help? You got... Uh -huh. Uh, you got he's going out to play tennis he's in his shorts and going out to play ball while you're worried about the birth of the baby which tells me if it doesn't tell you and I think it should because you went through it and I didn't that here was a terribly frightened little girl who wasn't getting the right kind of encouragement to, to help her sustain it wasn't your fault these were all external causes nevertheless you would feel internally that Maybe in some way I might have contributed. Maybe I might have done something. And that eating at your vittles would cause the, the dermatitis, would cause the scalp to, to say, oh, I want to scratch my head. Do you see what I mean? I want to, I want to get rid of this feeling. And you get the scalp condition. But, but you won't have to give it any more mechanical irritation. Madam. Because now that you know the cause, and the cause is completely revealed to you, you'll find that you have no desire to touch your scalp anymore. That guilt complex... Feels better. Yeah. Feels better already, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And you're not going to have rose fever anymore because now that you know where it stems from, you can cope with it. You know that you don't have to hate roses anymore. Now when I have you open your eyes, just notice how good you feel and you remember every word we've talked about. How do you feel? You feel better. And now I want you to hear the patient's husband reporting on the results of the hypnoanalysis in 1958. After one session of hypnoanalysis, the improvement has been very remarkable. The scar-like tissue, which was once as big around as a silver dollar, has now returned to normal except for a small groove which is about five millimeters wide. And hair has been growing and shows signs of completely filling in. The rose fever has improved 100%. And now when roses are in bloom, or whenever we have roses in a vase in the house, she can enjoy them. I hope this will help to show many others the far-reaching beneficial effects hypnosis can and does have.